Welcome back. In this lesson, we will go through the annual report of P&G. It includes the company's 10K form, which makes it a great example of a fully comprehensive annual report. Usually, it is very easy to find the annual report of a given company. All we have to do is type the name of the company, P&G in this case, followed by the words annual report, and then specify the year of the financial report that we are interested in. As you can see, the first link that appears in Google's search results is a direct link to the company's annual report. Okay, here it is, P&G's annual report for 2015. As you can see, the document starts with a table of contents, which can be really useful if we want to find a specific part that we are interested in. Below the table of contents, we can see some financial highlights and several charts with breakdowns of sales, by business segment, by geographic region, and by market maturity. Then comes the letter from A.G. Laffley the company's CEO and chairman, in which he explains the developments related to P&G's business, the company's strategic positioning, and other important topics that would allow us to understand what the company does and what it aims to achieve in the future. The next few pages contain information about P&G's operating segments and brands, a vital part of its business. I believe that such information is not compulsory, but some companies prefer to provide it to investors in order to facilitate their understanding of the company's business. Scrolling down, we find the company's 10K report. As you can see, 10K reports have a predetermined structure. Every 10K that you will see looks like this one. The report consists of four main parts. The first part describes the company's business and some of the potential risks that it might face. It provides information about the firm's operating segments, key product categories, key customers, number of employees, business model, and so on. This is really useful information if you would like to learn more about a given business. The second part of the report contains information about the stock market performance of the company, the dividends that it paid, its high and low price, and a comparison with the rest of the market. In this case, the S&P 500 index approximates the rest of the market. Scrolling down, we will find the section containing the management's view on the business, along with considerations about the company's operational structure, business units, recent developments that might have influenced its business, and expectations about the future. On page 44, we find the report of the independent accounting firm that verifies the quality of the company's financial statements. We will focus on auditing reports in one of our next lessons. And then we have P&G's income statement. As you can see, three years have been included in this income statement. This allows us to compare the company's current performance with the previous two periods. Indeed, this income statement is very similar to the one that we had in our exercise although it includes more items because the company's business is much bigger than the lemonade stand that we considered. Nevertheless, it starts with revenues, subtracts costs, and arrives at net income. After the P&L statement, we find P&G's balance sheet. The company's assets are equal to liabilities and equity. The accounting equation is satisfied. And it should be. Several thousand people worked on this report. The statement of shareholders' equity shows the changes in the company's equity in a very detailed way. 
After that, we have the company's cash flow statement, which gives an idea of the cash flow that was generated by the company's business. As we already know, income and cash flow are two different things. Investors are particularly interested in cash flow because it gives them a somewhat immediate idea about the health of the company's business. Net income can be influenced by a number of non-cash items. In the next pages, we can find the notes to financial statements. They include explanations, descriptions, and a breakdown of the large accounts that we saw in the main financial statements, and can facilitate our understanding of what is behind these figures. For example, let's search the note describing intangible assets. Here it is. A breakdown of intangible assets, showing that they are divided into two categories, intangible assets with determinable lives and intangible assets with indefinite lives. Furthermore, we have an additional breakdown of intangible assets with determinable lives. Such details are available for most of the accounts within the company's income statement and balance sheet. I think that this pretty much covers it. My advice to you is to download the annual report of a large company and go through it. Try to understand the structure of the report. After doing this exercise a few times, you will find out that all financial reports have more or less the same structure, which would allow you to work much faster and find the information that you need in the blink of an eye.